hello everyone, this is Wes James here, bringing you another awesome Final Cut Pro effect. In today's tutorial, we'll be experimenting with style framing and compositing. Style framing is a technique where you freeze a frame of action, you extract the subject, and then you insert it into a motion graphics composition. With compositing, today we're going to take some stock motion backgrounds, use key filters to combine them into an interesting background. Here's an example of what we'll be doing today. I'm here in Final Cut Pro, and the first thing you're going to need is some raw footage. I have a clip of a skateboarder doing a nose grab. And uh, the thing you're going to need to do first is you need to find the frame where you want to extract him. So I've already left a marker on the clip right here. And this is the frame I'm going to want to extract him and send to Photoshop. So if you set an in and out point for one frame, you go to File, Export, using QuickTime Conversion. You change the format from QuickTime Movie to Still Image. You go to Options, and then you choose your format. Now there are many formats you can choose from. There's Bitmap, JPEG, Mac Paint, Photoshop, PNG, Targa, or TIFF. And you know you choose whichever format you believe gives you the highest quality. I chose PNG because you know it's a it's a format that gives me pretty good quality, and it also gives me a relatively small file size. So choose that. And make sure the frames per second matches the original frames of your project. And after you do that, hit OK. I'm not going to do that for this situation because I've already done this before. But choose your format, choose your frames per second, and hit OK. And after you've chosen your format, just do a save. And Final Cut will extract that frame and save it as a PNG. Next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go over to Photoshop. So let's tab on over. All right, I'm here in Photoshop CS5, and I'm going to give you guys a brief overview of what I did. Basically, I took the still image, which is this one, the original image, and then I used the pen tool and masked him out completely and also cut in a hole, the original, cut in a holes to make sure I got any of the background left over, and then I made sure he was his own layer. So make sure you keep the original image, duplicate it, and then you mask him out using any masking solutions you know, like the lasso tool, the polygon lasso tool, or channel-based selection. And after that, I went to File, Save As, and just saved it as a Photoshop document. Photoshop documents, you're able to import that into Final Cut, and they'll come in as sequences. So, you know, just save it as a Photoshop document. I'm not going to do it again, because I've already done this once before. But just do uh, Save. There you go. So once you've saved your Photoshop document, go back to Final Cut Pro. All right, we're back in Final Cut Pro, and we've already saved our Photoshop document. It's called Nose Grab. We've imported it, and it's imported as a sequence. And as you can see, our original layers have both are both active, So, but we also can see our cutout. So as you can see, our cutout has its own bounding box, and it's only constricted to where I cut them out. So if we disable the original layer, you hit the keyboard shortcut Control b disable it temporarily, and we just select this layer. We have the ability to animate and manipulate the cutout like so. So let's re-enable the original layer, Control b So, <clears> the <throat> next thing we're going to need to do is we need to duplicate this nose grab sequence. So if you go to your project browser, you hit the keyboard shortcut, Option D to duplicate. You rename the original sequence, nose grab, you re rename it, you put BG at the end for background, and then for the copy, just change the word copy from CO, so if you hit enter, CO for cutout. So we already have the background sequence open in our timeline. So if we disable the cutout hitting the keyboard shortcut control B, the only thing that's visible is the original image. So if we double click the nose grab CO sequence and we select the original layer and hit the keyboard shortcut control B to disable it, the only thing that's visible is the cutout. So now we have the elements we want from both sequences so there won't be any overlap, there won't be any confusion. So if you need to close these sequences, hit the keyboard shortcut, control W, twice. All right, so we're back in our original sequence. And the next thing we need to do is we need to perform a cut where the marker is at. So let's get rid of the in and out point by hitting option X. Hit the keyboard shortcut, control V to perform a razor edit. So hitting control V split the edit in half. So we're going we're gonna to move this, the right half of the clip about four seconds, two frames over. So if you type in plus four, period 2, 
it moves the clip four seconds two frames. So the next thing we need to do is we need to bring in our background nose grab sequence. So if you go to your project browser and drag it in. So we need to make a few changes here. Let's shorten the out point a bit so the out point lines up with the end point of the second half of the clip, like so. All right, we're going to shorten the length of this sequence from its original duration to three frames. So if you select the end point, move the playhead back three frames, one, two, three, and hit the E key, it performs an extend edit. So it goes from four seconds to three frames. Next thing we need to do is we need to bring in our cutout sequence. And we're going to bring that on top. And we're also going to change the duration of this clip. As, we're also going to change the duration of this sequence as well. So we're going to change the out point. We move the playhead and line it up with the end point of the background sequence and hit the E key. It performs an extend edit. And changes its duration to about 3 seconds, 29 frames. So we have our nose grab PSD sequences in the timeline, so let's start duplicating the cutout sequence twice. So if you hold down Option and Shift, and you drag up, you create a duplicate of the cutout sequence. Do it one more time, and there you go. So let's start adding some animation to these overall sequences. So if you Option double click the first nose grab sequence, it's on track three. You go to the Motion tab, you hit Shift I to go to the end point. And you click on the center parameter. Let's set some keyframes here at the endpoint. Type in plus one period zero six. Moves the playhead. Set another keyframe. Type in plus one period two eight. Sets another keyframe. And then hit shift O to go to the up point. And set another keyframe. So the next thing we need to do is we need to change the value of the second and third keyframes. So if you hit the keyboard shortcut option K to go back to the third keyframe, change the X position from zero to 90. Hit Option K again and go to the second keyframe and change the center value of the X position from 0 to 90 as well. We're going to leave the first and fourth keyframe at 0, 0. And then as you watch, it animates over and then animates back into place, like so. So the next thing we need to do is we need to apply this key, this animation to the other subsequent sequences that are on top. So if you right click this sequence, select Copy, do a marquee select of the other two sequences, Hit the keyboard shortcut Option V to paste attributes. Select Basic Motion and hit OK. Now all three sequences are animating at the exact same time with the exact same keyframes. All right, so the next thing we need to do is we need to start adding some filters. So for our first nose grab cutout sequence, we're going to apply a light race filter. So if you go to your effects browser, go to Video Filters, scroll down to Glow. Select light rays and apply it to the first nose grab sequence. Option double click to bring the sequence to the browser. Go to your filters tab. Let's change a few parameters here. Let's change the center from 0 on the X position to negative 103 and the Y position from 0 to 95. Let's change the glow from 1.5 to 8. And then we're going to set some keyframes for the amount. So if you hit shift I to go to the endpoint. Set a keyframe there, type in plus one zero zero six. Set a keyframe there, type in plus one point two eight, and set another keyframe, and hit shift O to go to the out point and set another keyframe. So for the second and third keyframe, we're going to change the value from 50 to 200. So on the third keyframe, change the value to 200. Hit option K, change the value from 50 to 200. And for the first and fourth keyframes, we're going to change the value from 50 to 0. So if you hit Option K to go to the first keyframe, change the value from 50 to 0. Hit Shift K to move forward and change the value of the fourth keyframe from 50 to 0. And there you go. Now, we're going to add some Bezier curves to our keyframes. So in order to do that, hit the P key three times. And now, our pen, now we enable the pen tool, and we're going to set some Bezier curves on our keyframes. There you go. So now, as, this thing, as our sequences are moving, we have a light rays filter that's animating in as well. And then it animates out, back in. 
All right, so the next thing we need to do is we need to change the overall color of our cutout sequence. So for the topmost cutout sequence, we're going to add a color reduced filter. So if you go to your effects browser, go to video filters, scroll down to image control, and select color reduce, and apply it to our topmost cutout sequence. Option double click to bring it into the viewer. And we're going to change a few parameters here. Change the reduce to from four colors to two. And change the mix from 100 to 52. There you go. So far, so good. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a two-color border around our cutout. So if you go to the Effects Browser, go to Video Filters, go to Glow, and select Outer Glow, and apply it to our cutout. Change a few parameters. So let's change the radius from 2 to 1. Leave the brightness at 15. Change the range from 0 0.25 to 0 0.26 and leave the horizontal and vertical at the values that currently are. So if you need to, change the inner and outer color to whatever you guys prefer. I chose a white and sea blue color when I did this the first time, so I'm gonna do that again. So the inner color is gonna be white, and the outer color is gonna be a sea blue. There we go. So now, so far so good, but this color reduce filter and this outer glow just kind of appear out of nowhere so we need to apply an animation while our while our cutouts are moving so if you go to the motion tab you go to the crop parameter we're going to set some keyframes for the top crop parameter so if you hit the keyboard shortcut shift i to go to the endpoint set a keyframe here hit shift k to move to the next keyframe since we're going to have keyframes in the center parameter it makes it a lot quicker set a keyframe there hit shift k again and set a keyframe there and hit Shift K one more time. It's another keyframe. For the second and third keyframes, we're going to leave the value at zero. For the first and fourth keyframe, we're going to change the values accordingly. So for the fourth keyframe, change the value from zero to 100. For the first keyframe, change the value from zero to 95. And then we're going to change the edge feather from zero to 35. There you go. So if you play, if we scroll forward, we have a nice crop reveal as our cutout is moving forward. All right, so the next thing we need to do is we need to move these sequences to different tracks. So if you do a marquee select of all three cutout sequences, and then you move, you move them in the keyboard shortcut option up arrow, move it until the topmost cutout sequence is on track eight. So there, there, and there. So now our topmost cutout sequence is on track eight. Our second cutout sequence is on track seven, and our third and our original cutout sequence is on track six. So the next thing we need to do is we need to start adding some motion graphics background. So if you go to your project browser, I've loaded in some stock motion graphics background that I have in my library, but there are many places you guys can get stock motion graphics backgrounds. I'm going to be providing a link at the bottom of this video. So let's load in our first one. So we have a nice motion background. It looks like we have a bunch of uh, particle streams and light streaks. So we're going to bring that into our timeline, like so. Drag it into track two. I'm not necessarily liking the color of this background, so what we're going to do next is we're going to change the color. I'm going to do that by adding a hue and saturation filter. So if you go to your effects browser, go to video filters, scroll down to the image control, and select hue and saturation adjust, and apply it to your background. Double click to bring it into the viewer. All right, let's change a few parameters here. Let's change the hue wheel from zero to 271 and boost up the saturation just a little bit. Let's change the value from zero to one. There you go. So the next thing we need to do is we need to drag in another motion graphics background on top of this. So if you go to your project browser and I have this stock motion graphics background which appears to be a bunch of spinning disks. I'm gonna drag it on top of our motion graphics background here. Let's do that right now. Drag it on track three. All right, so this clip appears to be an HD clip. So if we use a scale, if we use scale distortion, we can make it fill up the entire frame. So hit command two to bring up the canvas window. Hit command minus so you can see everything scale it up a bit. 
scale and distort a bit so it fills up the entire frame. There you go. The next thing we need to do is we need to apply a color key filter to this background to get rid of the black. So if you go to your effects browser, go to video filters, scroll down to key, and select color key and apply it to the background. Double click to bring this background into the viewer. Go to the filters tab. And we're going to take the eyedropper tool and we're going to take the darkest section of the background to extract the black. Let's change the tolerance from 1 to 6. There you go. Now it's really starting to look like it's blending into the overall background. So let's do a quick save. So the next thing we need is we need a nice, cool animating arrow. So I'm going to bring in an arrow from Andrew Kramer's Evolution Collection. So if you go to your project browser, you select the arrow. I have an arrow right here. We're going to drag it into our timeline. Nice, nicely animates in. We're going to extend the length so the out point matches up with everything else. All right, so let's reposition this arrow like so. Let's rotate it a bit. I double click it to bring it into the viewer. Let's go to the motions tab to change the scale from 40 to 35. All right, so we have our arrow in place, but I'm not feeling the white so much. So let's change the color by adding a colorized filter. So if you go to your effects browser, go to video filters, scroll down to image control and select colorize and apply it to your arrow. Double click to bring the arrow into the viewer, go to the filters tab, and change the remap white to a C blue. I already have it saved in my color palette, so all I have to do is select that one and hit OK. So it changes the color from it changes the color from white to C blue. So the next thing we need is we need our last motion graphics background. So if you go to your project browser, double click. And I have a stock motion graphics background of what appears to be a highway of flashing lights. So let's drag it onto track five. So the next thing we need to do is we need to get rid of the black that's being shown here in this background. All we want is a flashing light. So we're going to apply a Luma key filter. So if you go to your effects browser, scroll down to key and select Luma key and apply it to your background. Double click to bring it into the viewer, go to the filters tab. I'm going to change the key mode from key out brighter to key out darker. There you go. If you need to, adjust the threshold. So I'm going to boost it down and adjust it to negative six. All right. Now I like the flashing lights and I like that I got rid of all the black, but I want to change the color from gold to something else. So if you go to the effects browser, go to video filters and go to image control and hue and saturation, all right, let's change the hue wheel from 0 to 145. Let's boost up the saturation to about 2. So we effectively change the lights from gold to a blue color. So the next thing we need is we need some text. So we're going to scroll up on our timeline to, to track 9. If you go to your viewer, go to your generators tab, go down to text, and select outline text. So we have sample text to change duration from 10 seconds to 2 seconds, 24 frames. Drag it on top. All right. Double click to bring it into the viewer window. Let's change the controls. Let's change the text from sample text to nose grab. change the font from Lusana Grande to something else. I chose a Fight This, which is basically the Fight Club font when I did this. Let's change the size from 64 to 99. The tracking from 1 to 4. And the line width from 50 to 20. Let's change a few center parameters. Change the Y position in the center from 0 to 135 and change the text color from white to red and the line color from black to white. 
there you go. So far, so good. So we have our text saying nose grab, but it seems too flat to me. So let's extrude it a bit by applying the extrude filter on the text. So if you go to the effects browser, go to your video filters, scroll down to stylize, and choose extrude, and apply it to your text. All right, so we applied the extrude filter. Let's change a few parameters. So if you go to the filters tab, let's change the angle from 45 to 220, the distance from 50 to 45, and we're gonna leave all the other parameters the way they are. All right, so so far so good. We have the text extruded, but it's kind of just standing there in place. So let's make it move if I happen to use the motion tab to make it move. We're gonna apply earthquake filters. So if we go to our effects browser, go to video filters, go to distort and select earthquake, and apply it to our text. Let's change a few parameters here. Let's change the twist from 0.1 to 0, and the horizontal and vertical shake from 0.1 to 0.09. All right, so far so good. I like the earthquake filter so much, I'm gonna apply it to my other cutout sequences, and in order to do that, we're gonna use the range selection tool. So if you hit triple G three times on your keyboard, and as you guys can see, I have the motion and filters bar shown in my timeline. In order to get that, just hit the keyboard shortcut command zero to bring up sequence options. Go to timeline options, select clip keyframes, and select motion bar and filters bar. And it allows you to see your keyframes and any filters and any motion you have in your timeline. So we're going to go to the original cutout sequence. Let's go from the second and third keyframe. So from here to here. And we're going to drag on the earthquake filter from the text and apply it. So, I'm going to do the same for the other sequences. All right, so now all three of our cutout sequences have the earthquake filter on them at that certain point from the second to third keyframe. So, it's only playing after our cutout is already in place, so there's no need to worry about it affecting any other of our animations. All right, so the next thing we need to do is we need to add some transitions on the in and out point of the outline text because it kind of just appears out of nowhere. So if you go to the effects browser, scroll up to video transitions, select 3D simulation, and select cross zoom and apply it to the end point of the outline text. Double click the transition to bring into the transition editor, change the duration from one, f one second to 10 frames. And if you need to copy the transition, just hold down Option and Shift and drag forward with your mouse until you get to the out point. And now it cross zooms in and out on the text. So now the text just doesn't appear out of nowhere. So the last thing we need is we need a quick white flash. So in order to get that, we're gonna use a color solid. So if we go to our viewer, go to the generators tab, scroll down to matte, Select color, and we're going to change the duration from 10 seconds to 5 frames, and drag it into track 9. If you need to reposition it, select it in the timeline, hit the keyboard shortcut option left arrow to move it, about 2 frames. Double click it to bring it into the viewer. Alright, so we have our color solid in place the way we want it, so we need to change the color from gray to white. So let's, change, let's animate the opacity of this white solid. So if you go to the motion tab, select the opacity parameter, and you move the playhead to the end point. So let's set a keyframe with the end point, move one frame ahead, set a keyframe here, move two frames ahead, set a keyframe here, and then hit Shift O to go to the out point, and then set a keyframe there. So we're going to change the values of the first and fourth keyframe. So on the fourth keyframe, change the value of the opacity from 100 to 0. Then hit Option K to go back to the first keyframe. Change the value from 100 to 0. Let's hit the P key three times to bring up the Bezier Pen tool. Let's add some Bezier curves. And if you absolutely need to adjust the keyframes, you could do so right now. So let's adjust the out point, the outgoing keyframe, the fourth one to there. Move this one ahead one more. So Everything lines up perfectly, so there's about the same amount of distance between keyframes. So now we have a opacity animation of our 
white solid as our skateboard gets into place for a style frame. So all we need to do now is we need to render. So I'll come back to you guys in just a few seconds. All right, so we're back. We've rendered this all out. So let's see what the overall animation looks like. So if you move the playhead to the end point of the raw footage, you press spacebar or the L key to play forward, and this is what we have. And there you go. You guys have successfully performed a style frame right inside of Final Cut Pro. And you've also used multiple stock motion backgrounds to create an even cooler background. So this technique could have easily been done in motion or after effects, but I felt Final Cut doesn't get enough love when it comes to performing motion graphics. So I just wanted to show you guys that it was possible to perform this technique right inside of Final Cut Pro. You know, and this technique is used in many places like sports highlights, movie trailers, and also in music videos. So Feel free to use this technique in Final Cut and try to perform it. Hell, try to replicate it. Try to even improve upon it. Take the sky to the limit if you absolutely have to with this technique because it brings a lot more creativity to your projects. Until then, stay creative.